I want to talk about the greatest love story ever told this morning. You know, last night um, I was watching the last episode of, of a book that was unfinished, written by Jane Austen, but unfinished. And boy, whoever produced this had the nerve to create a mini series and actually leave it unfinished, just like she left that book unfinished because she passed away. And so I never dreamed that the writers would not take up where she left off and finish the book. No. Uh, last night was the last episode and, it, you know, he, he finally professes his love for her last week. And what he says to her, which is so precious, he says, you make me a better me. And he, he, you know, it was just this revelation that, that her interaction with him, he showed, it reveals to him just how selfish and narcissistic he's been all his life. And he meets this woman who's just kind of out with it and she's pure and, and it ignites this, this love in him that causes him no longer to just want to be the recipient of love, but to be the giver of love and to give her back this love he has. And then something happens within the family and uh, he comes to her last night and he, you know, this horrible thing, she's waiting for him to propose. And instead of proposing, he announces that he's forced to kind of make a decision and marry a woman he doesn't love. and 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 she's just left there and and the writers have just left you there how knowing what i've read about jane austen's work it works in the past she would have never left the book uh, with her readers uh just waiting for the end of the story so hopefully some great writer out there will take up where she left off and uh, not leave us hanging and kind of finish the book where she would have uh, you know try to get into her mind I volunteer to do it. I'm not a great writer, but I think I can get into her mind well enough to be able to finish that story with some dignity. And, uh, but anyway, I wrote a song called The Greatest Love Story Ever Told. You know, the whole world is longing for love. It's a subject that kind of makes me blush and I'm not real comfortable with. And if you ask my movie buff daughter, <laughs> who will come over now and then and pick out movies, I'll say no love stories. And it's not that I'm totally unromantic. It's not that I don't really like love stories. It's that I don't want to cry. I don't want to be want to be left feeling, you know, just, yeah, I'd rather just give me an action movie. And, uh, but the truth is the whole world is longing for love. And the greatest love story ever told isn't between men and women. The greatest love story ever told is the love of God for mankind. And I wrote a song called The Greatest Love Story Ever Told. And of course, I'm not going to sing it. And some of you are already saying, thank you, Jesus. It's written for three-part harmony. And there's a part that goes really high with the lead. And it was written for my girls to sing. But the words are probably some of the best words I've written. And I think even the melody uh, is the best piece that I've ever composed. But it's talking about you know, Adam and Eve in the garden and, you know, God's love for mankind was demonstrated to Adam. And, you know, just to refresh you on the story, he gives this man and he creates this woman out of man and he puts them in a utopia experience, in a perfect environment. Uh, even the ground, the very ground that they walked on had not yet been cursed by sin. There were no thorns. There were no there was this mist that came up and watered the earth just from the ground and, and Adam and Eve, they named every living creature and they just walked with God. Bible says that Adam walked with God in the cool of the evening and, and there was no knowledge of sin and he gives Adam and Eve this beautiful, beautiful and utopia environment. And he says to them, he says, I've given you all this but there is a tree that I've put in the midst of the garden. You're not to eat it because in the day you eat it, you shall surely die, meaning they would have a spiritual death. And they just had everything perfect, but mankind being mankind and God's love being so, see God gives us a divine nature of choice. 
and he puts them there and he tests them. And sure enough, Eve is tempted. She yields, she gives to Adam, he yields. Sin passes upon all, all mankind and we're given this sin nature that, 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 you know, we just can't help it, we're born into it. But God loves us so much, the story doesn't end there. The old, entire Old Testament is a picture of what's to come when the Messiah is to come. God looks on mankind in every stage of history and every uh, dispensation of history and he sees that we need deliverance. We need salvation. We can't do it on our own. And he heralds the coming of Jesus Christ in the future. Jesus Christ finally shows up in the book of Matthew. And for 33 years, he walked this earth being God in the flesh, sinless, being tempted in every point as we are, but loving us so much that he lays down his life. Literally, he wasn't crucified and killed. He laid down his life and was crucified. The Bible says like a lamb led to the slaughter. He just laid down his, the, the lamb of God, giving himself. He became sin for us. Who, who knew no sin. He didn't know sin, but he became sin for us and he laid down his life that we might have life and that we might have something inside of us through believing in that act, the Holy Spirit of God that would give us victory over sin. We're no longer like Adam and Eve with this proclivity to sin and no, no uh, victory from it. Now we have the victory through Jesus Christ over sin. But you know, love is voluntary. I don't care how many uh, songs are written. If you were to go to satellite radio today or if you were to turn on your iPod, no matter what genre of music it is, 99% of that music is written about love, either love that's done wrong or love that's gone bad or unrequited love, but it's all about love because God created us with this huge void right here that's to be filled with the love of God. And you can try to fill it with all kinds of things and it's not gonna satisfy. There is no more beautiful love story than the love of God for mankind. And that's what I'm here to tell you this morning. And I'm going to give one illustration. You know, I myself have struggled all my life to understand God's deep love for me. Oh, I know it. I get the general understanding. And I'm like a lot of people. I got a good, solid, biblical understanding of the Word of God because I buried my nose in that book from the time I was probably 14 or 15. But let me tell you something. Learning the love of God is a lifetime journey, and it's something that he will teach me over and over. And there is nothing in my life as important as God revealing his love to me. Here's my illustration. A few years ago, my prayer partner and I, uh, who pray every day by phone, and we'll try to do it as much as we can, no matter how busy we are, we try to make that connection and we'll pray. On this particular day, it was, it was a summer day and it was just gonna be beautiful. And one of my favorite things is my girls coming over to the house and tanning by the pool and just spending time with them. But on this particular morning, my heart was heavy. I had woke with the heaviness of grief over the loss of my 16 year old son. And I was just bowed over in grief. And I didn't want to pass my depression and my grief onto my girls. I wanted them to come and enjoy the sunshine and enjoy me and me enjoy them and just have a wonderful day. And they didn't need the heaviness of my grief because they had grieved enough on their own. And as my prayer partner and I were praying, this was the third time that week that we prayed this prayer. Earlier in the week, she had prayed it twice. Today, I prayed it when I ended our conversation. And I said this, I said, Lord, send me a token of your love. Now, I don't look for signs. I'm not that charismatic that has to have a sign. I am a believer in the Word of God. He's given me all I need. But because I don't seek after a sign, He gives His privileged children tokens of His love. He will show and He will... I like the verse that I read in John the other day. It says it will be uh, like a revelation of His love. 
and it will just a manifestation is the word that I used in what the book of John used a manifestation of his love and and my friend had prayed twice that week that he send us a token of his love and uh, that morning as I was feeling the weight of, of grief I said send me a token of your love got off the phone with her my girls and the grandkids had not yet arrived yet I went and sat down in one of the uh, chairs the lounge chairs I had my fresh new beach towel spread out in front of me and one more time I bowed my head for merely a second and I said Lord send me a token of your love I opened up my eyes and there in front of me I kid you not was a picked off dandelion one of those bright uh, yellow flowers they're really just weeds but only God knows something about me that knew, no one else knew and I looked at it and I knew instinctively immediately that that was put there by the hand of God I hadn't put it there I looked around and already my brain my left brain you know that 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 part of the brain that that doesn't go on feeling that doesn't go on emotion that part of the brain that's just you know let's look at the science I'm looking around to try to figure out where this thing came from and I couldn't figure it out but it was there I knew God put it there but I immediately start question surely did God really just do a miracle and put a token of his love because only God knew that as a little girl as a little girl I would take those little I called them flowers I didn't know back then they were just a weed but I'd take that little bright flower and I just I called them buttercups you know the kind you just you put around uh, under somebody's chin to see if the yellow would light up and you you know say do you like butter and you put it under their chin and if the yellow showed oh you like butter it's just something kids do with these flowers or at least I did but the other thing that I did that nobody knows about as I would take the little petals and I'd say, he loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. And I'd pick off those petals because somebody told me that if the very last petal said he loves me, then you know he loves you. So who on this planet, who in this universe would know to put that flower there? But already my brain, my brain is trying to scientifically explain how that thing got there. I look around to see if the kids and grandkids had showed up and somebody, one of the babies had put it there and there was nobody there. And uh, finally the kids came and I'm telling them about it and I'm actually creating a post to put on Facebook because I want to tell the world what the Lord just did. But I put the flower underneath my chair. The kids come, I create the post and we're looking around and I said, well, let me show it to you. And I reached down to grab the flower and it was gone and I get upset because then I realize in that moment that God gave me a token of his love but I had to scientifically explain it away and so I'm looking around there are no dandelions on this entire farm I get in my car and I search the entire area the the parameters of the area not one dandelion in this community not one flower, not a one in their lawns. And I go back and I plop myself down on the chair next to my daughter, Bethany, and I'm upset. And she says, what are you upset about? I said, I can't find it. I put it under my chair to show you. I took a picture of it, put it on Facebook, but it's gone. And she said, mom, don't you understand? The very hand that put it there took it away. And I just, I didn't know what to say. I just want to tell you right now that God loves you. I don't suggest that you go looking for signs. Just believe his word. But after you've believed his word and you're walking with him and you ask him to give a token, show you a token of his love, and you can ask that now. When he sends the tokens of his love, no matter what it may be, believe it. Trust it. Trust that it was placed there by the divine hand of God. Don't be the doubter like me, but trust his word and trust his love because there is nothing, nothing that he wants to prove to you more than anything. And that's that he deeply loves you because you wanna know why? Love, when we know we're loved, when we know we're loved by God, then we'll go out to the uttermost parts of this earth. 
We'll be willing to tread the forest. We'll be willing to go into to the rainforest and go without food. We'll be willing to love people that we don't understand. We'll be willing to love our enemies. We'll be willing to lay down our lives when we know how deeply loved we are by God. So have a wonderful day. You are deeply loved by God.